Several factors must be considered when determining whether infestations are appropriate for releasing biological control agents. These include the physical characteristics of the release site, the current land use at the site, whether or not biocontrol agents are already present, current and future ownership, and access to the site. No weed infestation is too large for biocontrol releases. However, an infestation might not be large enough. Really small, isolated patches of your target weed will probably not be adequate for biocontrol agent populations to build up and persist, and are often better treated with other weed control methods, such as physical control or herbicides. An area with at least a quarter acre of your target weed is typically the minimum size to ensure a successful biocontrol agent release site but larger infestations are more desirable, especially if you or the land manager hope to someday use the release site as a field insectary. This is a nursery site where the biocontrol agent has become so abundant that you can collect it for release elsewhere. However, smaller infestations may be acceptable release sites in some cases, such as critical habitat zones where disturbance from physical or chemical control could be detrimental, or sites where herbicides are prohibited. Regardless of the infestation size, biocontrol agents disperse more easily in contiguous weed infestations, rather than infestations with only a few scattered plants and distant patches. Because weeds grow in a variety of habitats, potential release sites are likely to vary in their suitability for biological control. Furthermore, different biocontrol agents have varying habitat requirements, so the suitability of a site is difficult to predict in advance. Consequently, making multiple releases into separate sites will provide more opportunities for at least one population to establish in each region. More releases will also increase the likelihood that there is at least one very robust population that can serve as a nursery site to supply future releases. Biocontrol release sites should experience little, or even better, no, regular disturbance to allow biocontrol agent populations to build. Abandoned fields, vacant lots, and natural areas are good choices for releases. Sites where insecticides are used should not receive releases. Such sites include those near wetlands that are subject to mosquito abatement, rangelands that are subjected to grasshopper control, or infestations near agricultural fields or orchards where pesticide applications occur regularly. Roadside infestations along dirt or gravel roads with heavy traffic should also be avoided because extensive dust makes plants less palatable to biocontrol agents. Do not use sites where significant land use changes will take place, such as road construction, cultivation, building construction, and mineral or petroleum extraction. If supply of biocontrol agents is limited, prioritize release sites that are not regularly mowed, burned, or treated with herbicides. Always examine your prospective release site to determine if biocontrol agents are already present. This can be confirmed by finding the biocontrol agent in any of its life stages, or by identifying its characteristic damage. If a biocontrol agent you're planning to release is already established at a site, you may want to consider making the release at another site or it's not yet present. If a biocontrol agent is observed but populations are low, you can still release additional biocontrol agents at that site to augment the existing population. It is a good idea to select sites on land likely to have long-standing, stable ownership and management. This will help you establish long-term agreements with a landowner that will permit access to the sites to sample or harvest biocontrol agents, collect monitoring data for the duration of the project, and ensure that land management practices won't interfere with biocontrol agent activity, for example, chemically spraying or physically destroying the weed infestation. Always recheck with the landowner prior to inspecting release sites. In some cases, the ownership may have changed. If your biological control program involves evaluating the program's effectiveness, establish permanent monitoring sites before you release any biocontrol agents. Refer to videos 9 and 11 in this series for details on ways to do so. The monitoring sites will require regular inspections, so consider the site's ease of accessibility, terrain, and slope. Finally, you may wish to restrict access to release locations, especially research sites and insectaries, and allow only authorized project partners to visit the sites and collect biocontrol agents. This will require you to post no trespassing signs, install locks on gates, and etc.